Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to create a classic ping pong game in Godot so uh, as you can see here we as a player are on the left playing against the let's call it AI but it's really a very simple script uh, on the right and uh, we can score points we keep the track of them uh, we have this wonderful dotted line in the middle and a ball uh, that is bouncing back and forth so yeah let me show you how you can achieve the very same effect using gscript and google 4. so let's start from scratch here i'm gonna create a new project i'm gonna find suitable place for it so let's go here and i have game dev godot folder in my PC. Here I'm going to create a new folder called this ping pong tutorial. Select current folder. Render is forward. Version control metadata is set to git, of course. Create and edit. <coughs> so um, the first thing that we have to do is to uh, bring um, our assets that we're gonna need for our game. So I'm gonna create new folder here, call this uh, big assets. Here I'm gonna bring all of my uh, textures that I need. So that's gonna be, oh, let me bring this. So I'm going to need a ball. Right, which is, as you can see, nothing fancy, uh, just a square of 32 by 32. Uh, then for the paddle, I'm also going to bring the paddle. And interestingly enough, it's just a <clears throat> just a rectangle, thirty-two by two five six, also white. Then we're gonna need one more thing, uh, which is uh, uh, I shown you the dotted line in the middle. So let's do this. Also gonna bring that file. Okay, ping pong dotted line, and I'm gonna rename this just to make it uniform. So let's go here and start with a small letter. Okay, and for ping pong dotted line, this is 42 by 42 uh, when it comes to dimensions of the texture, uh, but only it has a padding around it of, I believe, uh, four pixels from each side, right? Uh, or eight pixels, or, or something like this, right? So I just have a texture with a padding, so this has no color in it, just the middle has something. Okay. Let me <clears throat> start coding. I'm gonna create uh, uh, let's go to setting first maybe and set everything that we need there so basically what I'm going to need is to change the clear color because I would like to have it set to black okay that's one thing um, then the other thing I could go to input map uh, and I could set this to um go like this add new action i'm going to call this move up because we're going to move our paddle up and i'm going to add two possibilities here one's going to be uh, w and the other is going to be arrow up and then i'm going to add new action and i'm going to call this move down uh, and i'm going to press s and I'm going to add another action, and this is just a um, arrow down. And that sets up 
our wonderful input map. So we have that set up. Uh, I'm gonna create a main scene and I'm just gonna call this main and I'm gonna save this. Let's create a new folder called this scenes. Okay. This is main scene. There is nothing there. So if I run this with F5 or by clicking a run project here, I have to select um, the scene, one of the scenes to be the entry point of our game to be the the uh, main scene and I'm going to just gonna choose select current and of course there's nothing there so uh, let's start working on maybe our walls um, so I'm gonna create a note here I'm just gonna search for an empty node since this is going to be a container for my walls gonna rename it by pressing F2 and I'm gonna call this walls and I'm gonna add children here and I'm searching for a static body to the and whenever you're searching for um, stuff like walls or some obstacles in your game that are not movable and other um, other bodies or other other objects should stop when or bounce back or when they approach uh, those walls you definitely can use a static body and what i'm going to <laughs> sorry so having a little bit of cough what i'm going to do is actually uh, save branch, branch as a scene i'm going to call this wall uh, i'm going to call this wall Pretty much whether you're using uh, uppercase or or not doesn't really matter. Just just be consistent with it. Okay, and I'm gonna open the um, the wall scene now in new tab, and here you can see the uh, warning. The warning informs us that um, okay, this is cool, but uh, to uh, collide to be collider for other bodies we need to add a collision shape to it uh, and this is really simple uh, what we can do is just uh, add child node and find collision shape 2d uh, and also i'm gonna assume we're going to need um, a sprite here so let's add a sprite Okay, and then I'm going to add our texture. Uh, I should have a wall texture somewhere. And actually, uh, because the paddles and the walls look pretty much the same, I can just rename this to be paddle or wall. And drop this as a texture cool and now let's set everything up uh, for collision shape we're gonna need a rectangle collision shape and we need to make sure that uh, it matches the shape of our um, of our wall perfectly and what you saw me do right here is i move sprite up Oops, I move sprite up so that in hierarchy right here it renders first and the collision shape renders seconds and this is very helpful because uh, if the order is switch you can see that I cannot see the collision shape and I cannot manipulate it very well right here so in Godot the when it comes to hierarchy and rendering the nodes that are closer to the root of the tree are being rendered first. So in that case, you can see that the collision shape is in front of the sprite because it renders last. So let's just adjust this by clicking and dragging and it's gonna snap pretty well to the edge of our texture so that we can have this setup properly. 
okay so this is a wall uh, do we need to change any transform here I don't think so so yeah this is all good now uh, I can go back to my main and start naming these so let's say this is going to be uh, it's going to be top wall and then this is going to be bottom wall I need to set those properly uh, so uh, let me move them around a little bit let's go to our transform and for the top wall I'm gonna go and set this to 10 minus 600 okay you can see it there I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to scale it. Let's unlink the scale from X and Y and set it to 9. Okay, so this is my wall. And then for the bottom wall, I'm going to do the same. Then uh, 600 uh, rotation is 90 and 9. Uh, oops, I. Yeah, that's going to happen if you don't unlink the scale. It's going to apply the same scale to X and Y. So here, you can click that and unlink them. So then you can adjust them separately. Uh, okay, this is looking pretty much correct. And if I run my game now, uh, yeah, you can see that the I can see top or bottom wall. I didn't really know. Because what is rendered by default is this rectangle here right so what I could do is I could rescale everything to fit into that rectangle but instead what I'm going to do and what's gonna give me a little bit more control uh, is I'm going to add a camera so let's find camera 2d right uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scale with the zoom to 0.4 and now you can see where our camera has its bounds, right? Looking at those two um, purple lines. And if I'm going to press play, now the area of my game renders properly. Cool. So now let's create a new scene um the root of it is going to be um rigid body 2d so let's search for other node it's a rigid body 2d and this is going to be <clears throat> this is going to be um my paddle so i'm just gonna rename this to paddle hmm very good coffee uh, and uh, then we need some children so of course I'm gonna add the sprite to be and uh, again you see this warning that we need a collision shape so let's add a collision shape to D collision shape to D and um, yeah let's set our sprite this sprite is going to be paddle okay and collision shapes here we can create because you not only the collision shape node but also the shape itself because here you can see that the node can take different shapes for example circle if you have uh, some kind of game with a ball we're gonna use rectangle we're gonna zoom in we're gonna drag that nicely to match our paddle Okay, cool, perfect. Well, almost perfect. You can fix that. This and this, okay. Uh, let's save this. Um, let's save this as a, um, let's create a new folder action, maybe. 
And let's call this panels. Okay, and what we need now is to have a script here so that we can move it. And it's gonna be rather simple. Let's create the script. Um I'm gonna um, I'm gonna get rid of all of that and we're gonna make our power move and you can see that it's going to be rather easy we need to define the speed um, for our follows so let's set that to 500 and I'm going to export that so you can manipulate it easily and change it and adjust it to your needs right here in the UI so if you don't know the export decorator makes given variable available to the inspector which is very very nice if you'd like to design and adjust the values to get yourself the proper game feel okay then i'm gonna do a physics process um which is a little bit different uh, than the uh, process itself uh, basically um if you'd like to apply some forces that uh, have to be calculated by the physics engine, this should be done in a physics process function instead of um, process. Okay, so here I can just say movement for starters is vector zero, right? But then we can read the input input is action uh, pressed and move up i'm gonna say movement is equal to vector two up else if input is action pressed move down set the movement to Vector two down, and with that simple if statement, we can easily read the input from our user, and that's going to allow us to use that to apply the li linear um, velocity to our rigid body. So time speed, okay. and of course you also have the uh, I believe radial or angular velocity if you'd like your body to rotate. Okay, and this is all we need for the movement of our paddle. Now let's go to our inspector for the rigid body and let's see uh, whether we need to change anything. And I think yes, uh, we don't want our um, paddle to be uh, affected by gravity because if I'm going to run the scene now we'll see it's gonna start slowly falling down even though I'm now I'm pressing some keys but it's falling uh, down on its own because of the gravity so let's turn that off also one thing that I would uh, suggest um, disabling is do you have any damping no that's good do we need any damping? Uh, no, we don't. But also I would like to log the rota rotation because um, our, let me just maybe use my wonderful skills to paint it for you. Uh, if that's our paddle and that's our ball and it's gonna come and hit our paddle we like our ball to bounce back, but what we don't want to happen is um, have our paddle rotate because of the force of the ball, which would happen um, in a you know real life, right? If you hit something, it's gonna rotate and fall down. We don't want to, that to happen. Therefore, we're going to lock the rotation. Okay, and that's pretty much our paddle. Uh, we can go to our main and we can press Ctrl Shift A or go Instantiate Child Scene. 
we're just gonna choose our paddle let's see how this looks uh, we have to set this uh, in a proper place and the proper place for that is minus thousand okay so it's just before the edge of our um our bounce of our game area cool now what we have to do is uh, go to our uh, go to our um, create our enemy paddle which is gonna be similar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this I'm gonna say enemy paddle uh, I'm going to uh, let me see I'm going to place it on the other side so that's gonna be a thousand pixels okay the x axis doesn't really matter in that case because we're not concerning ourselves with the movement along the uh, x axis but um, if I'm going to run this now see that I am controlling both paddles which isn't what I wanted so we will have to basically detach the script from that and create a separate uh, script for that paddle uh, which I'm going to create uh, I'm going to call this enemy paddle and I'm going to leave this empty for now okay but now I'm just controlling my own paddle okay cool okay so next step as you can probably uh, already guess is to handle the ball uh, and i'm going to create new scene i'm going to create root node but i'm going to choose your character body 2d um just to show you that you can basically use this not only for uh, character but also for other stuff right we could also use a rigid body that would be fine too um so yeah let's add sprite to the uh, and that's going to be as you can guess a ball uh and let's save this a ball and let's call this ball not tricky um i'm gonna rename this to be a ball and we of course need collision shape collision shape 2d it's perfect and let's see this is our ball we need to add rectangle shape and adjust that all right uh, this is done uh, let's see um, We need to have anything changes change here uh i don't think we have to but we have to write a script to make our ball move uh oh this is the default script that you get for uh, for uh, your character i'm gonna get rid of that and I'm going to just say class name the ball uh, let's export um, for initial ball speed and I'm going to set this to 20 then every time my ball hits a puddle I would like for it to move a little bit faster okay so i'm gonna set export var speed 
um, speed multi flyer and I'm gonna say that um, every time it should go like 2% faster okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna stack up and it's gonna be noticeable after a few bounces uh, but at, at the beginning it's not gonna have a big impact on our game so I'm gonna set this to 2% because this is like you know it's like one two percent faster every time right uh, okay and then I'm gonna find um, I'm gonna define a ball speed with with restart and I'm gonna say that this is initial ball speed okay uh, oh And that should be fine um, let's say what we have to do on the ready and I'm gonna create additional function here gonna be start ball set a ball whatever and what we have to do here is we have to provide a random velocity because that's me that's my favorite tool for game development paint so uh, we have a paddle, we have a paddle, another paddle, and then we have a ball, right? And what we have to do is we have to define the starting velocity for our ball. And it has to be random velocity. Like for one time I would like it to go there, but, oops. But for another time, I would like for it to go maybe here, right? And then if I'm gonna start another round, maybe it should go like this. So we have to randomize um, the starting velocity of our ball. Okay, so I'm gonna call the function randomize here. And as you can, Tell from the docs, uh, what is randomize, right? Uh, right, just to make sure that we have a different seed than the previous one, um, because if we have the different seed, that the chance that we get the uh, the very same velocity that we got last time is really really diminished. So yeah, let's go to a ball. And then we have to set the velocity for X. And uh, here's a cool thing that we could do. We're gonna say, create array from minus one to one. And then do rand E. Uh, it's not declare. Divided by two times initial ball speed. Okay, so basically, what we're doing here uh, is uh, we are um, taking the random value from the minus one to one um, range. Okay, so this is like some random velocity from that range and the same we can do for velocity dot y only i'm gonna uh, change the range to be minus 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 and again um, you can adjust those values to match your own needs say percent to initial ball speed Cool. Um, okay, so basically we have the velocity now and yeah, that's all. That should be enough for us to, uh, to move the ball, but uh, we actually have to call 
move and collide function to make it move. So go to physics process. Um, we're working with reactor body, we're working with velocity. So definitely we're gonna use physics process instead of process. I'm gonna call var collision move and collide velocity times ball speed times delta so um i need to know whether my whether my uh, ball collided with anything right that's uh that's why i'm going to use the move and collide which is going to return the information about collision okay um just okay and then if we have a collision we need to bounce from it so if we have a collision then we can say that the new velocity is equal to velocity dot bounce, which is a cool function. Uh, let me right. Um, where is it? Um, that's the property, and I'm looking for. Oh, velocity bounce, yes. Returns the vector bounce off from a plane defined by a given normal. Okay. Uh, and if you don't know, let me again use the plane. What is normal? So let me sketch this pretty quick. We have uh, this is a paddle, this is a ball, and then my ball is coming to come and hit the paddle like that right so the normal is gonna be the line which is uh, which has 90 degrees let me oops let me sketch this real quick so this is the surface that we're hitting right so then the normal is going to be a line that has 90 degrees to that surface, right? Here we have 90 degrees, okay? And give it that information, I can calculate the bounds by just saying, oh, if that's the angle from the, um, from the velocity of my ball towards the normal then it has to bounce back at the same angle angle right so a little bit of math for you let me find a proper color meaning that this angle and this angle they are the same so if we provide the normal, then we know how to bounce off given surface, okay? Thankfully, this is really easy because uh, information about collision has a normal. So there's a get normal function that I can provide. And then I'm gonna also add uh, the, uh, multiply this by the speed multiplier. And that basically uh, is our ball. So, oh, we have to instantiate it. So let's add that, instantiate tile scene ball, and let's see where this works. Okay, cool. And yeah, as you can see, it bounces. And <laughs> now we have to code our enemy because um, he is not moving, he's not doing anything. So let's go to enemy puddle and let's figure out how can we code that. So basically what we have to have here is the information about our ball. 
and there are a few ways to do this um, I'm gonna just do the simple thing here and say uh, export var ball which has to be a ball okay and let's see can we just drag and drop it yes perfect okay that's how we can get reference we could also search the tree use git node add the uh, given um, node and by that i mean the ball to a, a group and search through that possibilities are countless so i don't need a uh, ready here uh, what i need to define is uh, the paddle speed and let's define this to be 3500 3, I think that's gonna be good and then in the physics <coughs> sorry in a physics process I'm gonna say direction of the movement of my paddle is the ball position minus my current position so the power position normalized so uh, that's gonna be a vector normalize is basically um, change that vector to have a value of one or minus one and then I can say that line linear velocity uh, y is equal to direction y times paddle speed times delta okay and if you don't know what delta is it is just a span of time from the last call of the physics process to um, current frame right because uh, if you're working on a very very fast computer those um, delta values will be very low but if you're running the game on a device with limited resources like memory or computing power this value is gonna get higher and this is so that the movement is uniform across different devices right because let me just um let's say this is a very fast computer and these are the spans of time between next calls of physics process right and then you have very slow oops and then you have very slow computer and these are the spans between calling of the physics process so as you can see um, and this is of course time right this is the time axis and so you can see that we're arriving at the very same place right in the end if the in the same amount of time the difference is how many times physics is getting called because if we would not use that value on a very very vast computer for example in a car game your car could go three times faster than a car of your friend which is running his game on a very low very bad computer so we need that to get the in uniform movement and uniform calculations on different machines uh, okay cool and yeah that's basically it uh, let's see whether that works actually okay looks like our guy is a little bit too slow uh, I think I forgot one zero here okay this this looks better as you can see he should be able to yeah he should be able to bounce the ball back to us and uh, basically um, we could call that done but I think uh, we can polish this a little bit 
more up with stack okay uh, we could push this a little bit more so uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, few things here and I'm going to add the detection here and here when the ball touches that area so basically we have to have some kind of system to detect when one of our uh, players or AI scores a point. So let's create new scene uh, and I'm going to use here um, aria oops, to use here aria to d uh, which as the name suggests can be used to detect whether given body uh, enters uh, given area so add of course what we need is collision shape uh, and uh, let us see how this should be set so um, we don't it doesn't need um, sprite because it can be invisible I'm gonna set the scale to be 1.4 and then scale Y scale to be 7 here. Uh, oh, sorry, this should be the area. So here, unlink that, set this to 1.4, set this to 70, uh, and let's save this as, let's rename this to um, Edge Team School like the guitar player from YouTube uh, and then if I'm going to add in rectangle shape we can see it has a representation like this this is good enough um, what we need is we need a simple script to actually detect uh, to detect when the ball hits that area okay and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get rid of everything um, and we can add a signal here so let's go to node and in signals you can see that we can link to a different signals what interests us the most is uh body entered right because a uh, ball is a is a kinematic body 2d right or uh character body character body so we need to use that so mm, you can click right choose connect and connect on body entered and what i'm just gonna do that just to show you that you can react differently to different bodies that are um that are coming into your area i'm gonna write if ball is ball right so uh, sorry if body is ball right so I can check what type has the body that is crashing into my uh, area. And I'm gonna emit a signal there and I'm gonna call this point score. Point score emit. And this might seem like a little bit of overhead because what you could do is just instantiate those edges here right and then connect the uh, to the signal directly uh, instead of writing the script and re-emitting a new signal but this signal is more descriptive for me it says that the point was scored and also this is um, in that case not necessary but this is a good approach to be a little bit defensive and check what is actually hitting your area so that's why I'm doing this 
Okay, so let's go to main and let's instantiate our edges and I'm gonna call this um, left edge. I'm gonna set here and then we can duplicate that, call this right edge uh, and move this here. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, that they're um, not the precisely in the same place, they're not precisely mirrored, it's just information about the ball hitting here or here. Okay, so we need a simple script to um, basically manage what is going on. So we can go to main and just add a simple script. Uh, let's keep track of our points. So player points is equal to zero, and then enemy points is equal to zero. And we're gonna need some references, but yeah, let's start by setting up the information about our player or whether the um, the uh, enemy score. So here I can see point score and I can see that this is the left edge. So if that signal is emitted, that means that the enemy scored a point, right? So I'm going to connect to main and I'm going to say uh, function, let's call this on enemy score. Okay, cool. And let's save that and let's go and here make the same function call this on player scored who cool. and now the most basic thing we can do is just to uh, update the points value uh, so let's get rid of all of that and I'm gonna say player points plus equals one here I'm gonna say enemy points plus equals one and just for fun let's print enemy points and do the same here for player points print the book player points um, cool and let's try and test this Okay, so I'm going to try and let my enemy score uh, here. Let's see. Yep, enemy scored. Okay, cool. So one thing that you can see that uh, we have a problem with is that whenever there's a score, we should kind of reset the game. So. Uh, put the ball back in the place um, we should also uh, apply new velocity to a ball and probably reset the uh, position of our paddles so uh, let's get to that I'm gonna create the references for all of the actors that we need so enemy paddle is enemy paddle um, get reference to a player paddle, which is player, uh, how it's called? Just paddle, okay. Paddle, then uh, reference to a ball. Okay, I'm gonna create a simple function and call this reset game state. One thing you could do to achieve the very same result would be to reload the scene, right? Because if you reload the scene, everything goes back to start. But if we reload the scene, we'll also um, lose track of our points. So I'm gonna do this by hand. I'm gonna say enemy paddle global position y is equal to zero. Player paddle global position y is equal to zero. 
ball velocity is equal to factor zero uh, and I'm also gonna say ball global position um, is equal to factor two zero uh, then an enemy paddle linear velocity is equal to vector two zero layer paddle linear velocity is equal to vector two zero uh, and ball start uh, I would like to call the start ball function and I can but as you can see I'm not getting this autocomplete but I can just type it here that this is definitely a ball and now I should no I'm still not getting the uh, can I just do last ball Oh, now now I get the autocomplete so um, this script is based on Python it's cool it's not a perfect language when it comes to some of its feature uh, features but it's good enough but sometimes you can use this um, additional typing to help yourself uh, when it comes to types and autocomplete the alternative which is really good to be honest is to write the code in C-sharp and you can do that by using external editor like uh, Visual Studio Code, <laughs> for example. Uh, but um, if you'd like to start, stick with GD script, which is fine for the simpler games, um, well, you can help yourself with that optional timing. Uh, I think I wrote, uh, uh, I read somewhere that uh, there are plans to bring the C sharp uh, into the built in editor so that you don't need to use a Visual Studio Code for that. Uh, but if you'd like to, me to do a tutorial about using the C sharp language in GScript, let me know in the comment. I definitely can do that. Okay, let's see where that works and we of course have to call this uh, whenever there's a point and let's see yep it rests it perfectly cool we have that out of the way uh, basically there are two things left for us to do uh, and this is uh, adding that cool dotted line in the middle and adding some simple UI so let's get to it mm, I'm just gonna add a line to D here and we have to configure this so width is gonna be 32 pixels then we need to set up the points for our line uh, and I'm going to make two points first point can be at 0 0 0 other should be at 1 2 0 0 I think um, then I can change the transform to be minus six uh, sorry, minus 600 okay this is correct and then we need to go to a fill, set the texture here, okay? And then we need to set the texture mode to be tiled, all right? And we need, um, what do we need? This is correct. Uh, Mm, 
it look right now if just one oh this is a ball probably uh we need to okay so to make it um make it uh, like a dot place of dots across whole nine we have to go to texture repeat and choose enable and now we have this wonderful dot line in the middle so that's one thing out of the way and uh, now when it comes to a ui we don't need too much really but let's go to new scene search for canvas layer um yes and let's add a child node and call this find margin container okay let's make this span across the whole screen uh, we're gonna add a margin here so let's go here and let's go to um theme overrides constants margin left margin right to 32 just to push it out a little bit uh let's save this let's change the name to ui and let's save this and this is going to be very simple we're gonna add two nodes two labels uh, that's going to be player points and that's going to be the name points uh, and what we need is a simple script uh, add script Gonna be very simple. I'm going to just add a class name here um, and get the references to what we need. <clears throat> so already var player points label is equal to margin container uh, player player points, right? Um, and if you don't really like those uh, long paths going through all the layers of your UI tree, then what you could do alternatively is go to player points, right click, find access as unique name, and then you can simplify the path here by just saying blur sign percent player points. And you can see that percent sign here and then you can omit the margin container let's do the same for uh, the na points and that's going to be already and any points label enemy points um already let's reset the uh let's set the text so player points label text is going to be equal to percent b percent zero maybe let's look at the font size here and the positioning so yeah that's not really correct uh i would like to align it top and align it here let's find this. that's a little bit too little let's go to team overrides font sizes uh, and let me check the font size it should be 64 and uh, the same is gonna apply here so same go to right top um let's set this font size to be 64 let's say zero uh, and i think that should be yes i provided the wrong value here but we don't need that margin top okay so yeah we want margin from left 
and from right. Cool. Uh, with that, we can go back to our script um, and reset this. So, enemy points label text go to percent D percent zero. And then two simple functions that we need is update enemy points uh, and let's say that's gonna be pretty much the same just the value is gonna come from points and update player points points in uh, player points label basically the same as here but comes from points and these functions we have to call them whenever uh, we score a point but this is already something we know in on enemy scored and on player scored what we need is to instantiate chart scene which is going to be UI so add this to the screen right and uh, then we need to grab a reference of that in our main script so i'm gonna go on ready var ui is equal to ui uh, and then we're gonna call uh, let's cast this to ui so that you know what we're working with UI um, update any points to be enemy points and here UI update player points to player points and that should work I hope so zero one for him two for him uh, let's try and score a point here can see that the ball is moving a little bit faster and we should score up and we're stuck again um, yeah that's gonna be a problem but basically we could also score a point and uh, and uh, that UI should also update. Um, we could spend some time figuring out how to solve that um, stacking issue, right? When we pinned against the yeah, when we pinned against the wall. But uh, this tutorial has uh, already over an hour. Uh, but if you'd like me to solve this in additional video um, just let me know and uh, I can record additional part about how to solve that issue right. but basically uh, how I would solve that well actually ah never mind let me solve that um, get stuck here so basically what we're doing here is we are bringing the area close enough to the paddle right because we know that the ball is already behind the paddle and there's no way for it to <clears throat> there's no way for it to uh, bounce it back to me so I'm just moving that area close enough so that it detects the situation when the ball is getting stuck with the AI paddle as me scoring a point and that should solve that issue so that's the uh, most logical and simplest way to solve that so let's try this again yeah and as you can see the ball would go across uh, to the to the finishing yeah he's he's trying to uh, if the ball is basically behind him 
that means I scored a point. So yeah, you can see here the points are getting calculated correctly, they're being displayed. So yeah, basically that's the ping pong in, in Godot uh, 4. Yeah, kinda cool. Please comment, like, subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna basically I'm gonna work on a series where we we create those really really old school classic games uh, in Godot because I think that's the perfect way to learn about Godot and programming. Uh, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. In the next one, yeah. Goodbye.